Hello, everyone, and welcome to Watch and Walk podcast with Ebenezer. This podcast aims at inspiring you to trust in God and obey His Word every day. Be edified as you listen to this exhortation. Hello, friend. My name is Ebenezer, and I believe God's grace is keeping you well. I hope you have been learning a lot from my conversation with Abraham. Today, I offer you the third part of my interaction with him, where we talk about Abraham's weaknesses and what we can learn from them. And allow me to remind you that the role of Abraham is played by Dr. Joel Gregory, who is a professor of preaching at Baylor Stewart Seminary here in Waco, Texas. Here is the third part of our dialogue. Now you, you, you talk about how God um, credited your faith. Um, your, your belief in his uh, promise as righteousness and you didn't have you know the perfect life what 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 were some of your major weaknesses and you can also connect it to even threats that you faced um, but what, what were some of your, your weaknesses just let, help us understand for us to know that of course you yeah. believe God but uh, you still had some pretty tough times yeah well probably one of the weakest things I ever did there was a fan. But I got scared we'd all run out of food. So I went down to eat. That's a bad idea right there. Uh, you know, the Egyptians, they worship, if it flew in the air, swam in the water, crawled in the mud, they made a god out of it. They worship frogs, dogs, <laughs> you know. So I went to Egypt. When I got down there, and so I was rich, Pharaoh knew who I was, and had a big entourage, all those people. And he decided he wanted to put Sarah in his harem, had mm -hmm. a big hair. Well, I knew how he operated. If he wanted to have Sarah in the harem, he going to kill me if he knew she was my wife. So I lied. Oh, I lied. <laughs> I lied to save my own life. It's a big shameful. It's right there in the Bible. Mm. Oh, mercy. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to be in the Bible for 4,000 years. But anyway, I, I, I said she was my sister so he, he could take her into his harem and wouldn't kill me because I was her husband. That's one of the low points of my life was when I lied about Sarah. I'm not sure she ever forgave me for that. Really. <laughs> and then that whole thing, you know, Sarah got nervous she couldn't have a baby. So she had this young woman named Hagar. And she told Hagar to come over to my bedroom and sleep with me. Well, she got pregnant and had this kid named, named him Ishmael. And it really was a low point because Sarah got mad then. Hagar didn't have any sense and she started mocking Sarah. Sarah got mad at everybody, including me. And so uh, that was a low point because I had to send Hagar and Ishmael out to the desert. I gave him a loaf of bread and a jar of water and said bye. Hmm. That's a low point for me because he was my son. Hmm. Wow, wow. That, that's definitely a low point for you. And uh, threats. Um, talking about um, threats, you talked about the famine. But looking at your life, I think one of the threats that I, I did notice was um, the situation with you and your son. Mm. Isaac. Mm. Uh, so God promises you a son. He said that he's going to be the heir. It, it was going to be through him that God was going to uh, perpetuate his uh, covenant with your with your generation. And then he comes in one day to test you. He, he says, I mean, of course, we know from hindsight that it was a test, but he tells you directly that take your son, your only son whom you love. And you didn't ask any questions. Yeah. That's my worry. I mean, it it, it really intrigues me. It's, it fascinates me. Why didn't you ask any question and go ahead and even attempt to yeah. sacrifice Isaac? Yeah. Well, I learned by that time, too, not to argue with the voice. Came to me, take son, only son, son you love, and uh, sacrifice. A uh, long time after I was gone. A Danish writer, Soren Kierkegaard, wrote a book about it called Fear and Trembling. And that's how I felt. I felt like I had to obey him, but I trembled with fear. Hmm. 
because I didn't know how to put the two together. He promised that all my descendants through Isaac would bless the earth. And then he said, kill him. Now, the writer in Hebrews had a good idea when he said that I believed if God had to, he'd raise him from the dead. That's over in Hebrews 11. You know. <laughs> hmm. All my descendants wrote, wrote a lot of those books. You know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Over in Hebrews 11 said that I believe God could raise him from the dead. And I did for the most part. But we took, you know, first of all, I tried to slow things down. I had 318 people that worked for me. Mm -hmm. I never cut. I never cut wood. I never saddled the donkey. But that morning, to slow things down, I did it all. I saddled the donkey. I cut the wood. I put the wood on the donkey. I took two young men with me as witnesses. And man, what I didn't, I didn't tell Sarah. Oh, mercy. I did not tell Sarah. <laughs> I'm sure if you had told her, she wouldn't have allowed you. Oh, no, no, no. And that created trouble later. You might remember, after that, she doesn't show up anymore. Uh, <laughs> she actually, I think, moved in with our in-laws. Uh, <laughs> she gone after after that. But anyway, I took him. And when we got there, I put the wood out. He, we had to fire a fire pot with coals in it. You didn't have matches back then or that stuff. And I laid him out, and I had my hand up near, and Yahweh's angel said, stop, now I know you won't hold your son back from me. And there was a ram with long horns caught in a bush. Now, I didn't know it at that time, but what he was trying to demonstrate was that we all needed a substitute. Hmm. Hmm. That ram was a substitute. And wow. what he was trying to show us way before it happened was that one of my children would be a substitute for the whole human race. Hmm. Because it was not just my son, according to the flesh, it was his son. And what he asked me to do and then stopped me 2,000 years later with his own son, he didn't stop it. Wow. He got sacrificed. Isn't that something? Wow. He stopped you with, the, with your own son, but he didn't stop when it was his own son. No, I'll never, now I'll never forget because what, what his angel told me, now I know that you won't withhold your son, your only son. And really, 2,000 years later, I told him back what he told me. Now I know you won't withhold your son, your only son. Isn't that amazing? Wow. And see, wow. now looking back on it, I see that he wanted in, in, the, in the ABC 123 kindergarten childhood days of people, he wanted us to get the idea of a substitute for sacrifice. Hmm. It took us a long time to figure that out. We thought it was sheep, bulls, and goats, and birds. He was just teaching us that someday he'd send his only son as a sacrificial substitute. And he stopped me from slaying Isaac, but he didn't stop himself from giving his only son. Wow. I presume that is why in, in the book of John, uh, chapter 3, it talks about, for God so loved the world. So it, it gives us an idea of the uh, immensity, uh, the greatness of God's love for us, right? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Hmm. That's amazing. And uh, let me just reconcile that experience with the first one that you had when God promised the son and the descendants and you believed and it was counted to you as righteousness. Now, mm -hmm. I'm, trying to I'm trying to connect the two, the two there and ask you a question. I uh, what would you say about saving faith? What would you say for those of us who believe in Jesus Christ? You talked about not doing anything and we accept what has been done, but right. you definitely went through some tests there. So how would you how would you define or explain faith to those of us who are trying and then and, and, yeah. um, desiring well, to follow the Lord? Another one of my children wrote a book in the New Testament, James. James. He was half brother of Jesus, James. Pastor of the church in Jerusalem, over 
chapter two of what he wrote, uh, he noted that I believe God and it was counted as righteousness, but that's invisible. The way I made that visible was in my obedience, willingness to sacrifice Isaac. You know, he points to a prostitute right by me. Isn't it funny who you wind up in the Bible with? Hmm. Rahab. <laughs> There's Rahab right there by me in the Bible. And it says, uh, Rahab had faith, which she demonstrated by hiding the spies yep. at Jericho. So there's two sides of that. There's the inward faith, but James was right when he said it leads to an outward obedience. Hmm. It's an inward no faith. Part, yeah, inward faith, but it's invisible. So it has to be demonstrated in outward obedience uh, two sides of the same coin mm -hmm. hmm. he said the faith without works is dead hmm. if i hadn't been willing to face the test with isaac james would say i had dead faith mm -hmm. hmm. wow that's interesting I, I i i do remember what he said that if you believe in god you do well and even demons believe and they tremble i always <laughs> uh, I find it fascinating because it's like if your faith does not lead to obedience, it's like you're not even doing more than a demon. <laughs> no, no, they're demons that really are, are better church members than some church members. <laughs> there, there's church members that don't tremble at all. They don't fear God. They think he's kind of like Santa Claus. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, in some senses, the demons are better believers because they know he's there and they know to tremble. To tremble because of his awesome, righteous presence. And, you know, James pretty pointed about that. Just mouthing the words, I believe, uh, isn't enough for faith. You know, and on a God's gracious, he gives us a lifetime to grow into obedience. But you better be able to see something. Hmm. No wonder Jesus said that not many who call me Lord, Lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven, right? Ooh, that's tough, yeah. <laughs> All right. I believe you gleaned some helpful lessons from this interaction. Please make a date with me next week for the fourth part of my conversation with Abraham. Until then, may God bless your reflection on this one. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for listening to Watch and Walk Podcast with Ebenezer. Watch and Walk Podcast comes to you this and every Wednesday. To get notifications of new episodes, please subscribe. This podcast is brought to you by Watch and Walk Ministry. Visit us at watchandwalk.org to learn more about this ministry. God bless you.